In this video, we're going to talk about SQL Server Integration Services Scale-Out Topologies. Now, in order to understand why this feature is good for us, we would probably need to first start off by understanding the limitation that we were facing before. Traditionally, when you create an SSIS package, it needs to install inside a SQL Server Integration Services catalog. And uh, install, in this case, basically means deploy, where we uh, deploy the package into the uh, catalog. However, we'll very soon reach a limit where one particular piece of hardware with one installation of SQL Server with an integration services catalog might have so many packages deployed into it that the hardware is now insufficient to run packages simultaneously. As a result, you might encounter performance issues, you might encounter a number of different uh, problems that might come up with a lack of scalability. And essentially, when you boil it down, it's all a matter of putting all these eggs in one basket and reaching the point where there isn't enough c CPU or there isn't enough RAM. In order to circumvent this, in order to avoid this or uh, bypass this issue, Microsoft has implemented the scale-out topology and those of us who are familiar with things like Polybase might be able to immediately recognize this setup where essentially what we have is a scale-out master and the master contains all the SSIS packages and every time you want to e execute in a package the package is then pushed from the master to a worker the work gets done on the worker and the execution results are transferred back to the master uh, to kind of visualize this, I've created a small PPT, so let me just go ahead and show it to you real quick. So this is what we have typically, where we have one piece of hardware with one database, and uh, this database is obviously SSIS catalog, followed by multiple packages deployed in the SSIS node. And the package, while deployed on this piece of hardware here, will execute here and just move data from the data source to uh, the on-premise system where uh, it does whatever execution it needs to and you can see that this doesn't scale well because at some point the hardware will reach a point where there isn't sufficient slots to add more CPU or RAM and in these situations what we typically do is we purchase another piece of hardware install integration services there and then start deploying the remaining packages into a new instance of the catalog this might be a way that we can avoid the issue however the problem that happens is that this usually makes sense when there is a clear service boundary so here when I say service boundary what I'm referring to obviously is the fact that you could have this piece of hardware belonging to the HR department and therefore HR packages could be deployed here sufficiently uh, without causing any issues in terms of performance and the other hardware might have a service boundary for say finance or learning and development and therefore there is no overlap as far as uh, the packages are concerned so it doesn't really matter where they're deployed as long as they're within their service boundary so in this case it might make sense for you to have uh, two SSIS catalog databases having said that we see in more and more cases especially nowadays with uh, very large uh, enterprise data warehouses that they would prefer to keep all their ETL packages in one location it makes it easier to manage upgrade and monitor and therefore the tendency with deployments is to have everything in one place which instantly hits the limit of uh, not having sufficient CPU or memory so to avoid that issue we have the scale out deployments like I was mentioning earlier and essentially what's happening here is we still have the same hardware with the SSIS catalog and we still continue to deploy packages just like we've always been doing however this particular piece of hardware is now designated a scale out master and we have other nodes as well which have SQL Server integration services installed on them and they are not masters they are workers so they can execute a package but they don't really host a package in any real sense of the the term and what happens is we might have package one two three four deployed in this instance of the SQL Server integration services but at the time of execution the execution is then propagated by the master to the worker and the worker uses its resources its own CPU and memory to execute the package and cascade results back to the master this way what happens is we can take advantage of hardware that's just lying around without really being used and this is very common for SSIS packages that run ETL workloads for data warehouses where the ETL or the extract transform load is scheduled to usually run at the end of the day or the end of the week and most of the time when nobody's connected 
and we'll actually have hardware with SQL Server integration services or just basically CPU and RAM available but not being utilized and this topology that we have here allows us to go ahead and take advantage of idle hardware uh, to do some useful work. So what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to go through the steps required to set up and configure scale of deployments in uh, integration services. And the first thing you want to do is when you're installing SQL Server, you need to get to the feature selection screen, as you can see here. And when you're installing integration services, you get the option to integration to install the scale out master as well as the scale out worker. And uh, you need to go ahead and check. Uh, the scale out master for the node on which you will be hosting your SSI catalog database and scale out worker on the other nodes where you expect the packages to be running as part of your scale out deployment. And the next step is basically you'll be given two options for uh, configuring the scale out master as well as the worker and because this essentially is movement of data about your packages it might contain sensitive information etc. Uh, there will be a certificate that will be required which we'll be talking about in a little bit more detail later on. Naturally as with Polybase you can see that we've got uh, services that will go ahead and offload or coordinate this work. So we've got the scale out master and scale out worker because in this case I'm basically showing you how you can install it so I've got both of them running on the same machine. Uh, this, as you can see here, is the option for installing and configuring the Scaleout Master. And as you can see, there's a port number, so you will need to go ahead and um, use uh, a firewall, a poker hole in the firewall, so that this port is enabled. And naturally, we will have a certificate created, and you can see that the certificate uses the IP address, uh, as you can see here, with the server name, etc. Uh, you, if you have an existing certificate, you can always reuse that. and. Um, in this case I don't have one yet so I'm just using this and then naturally for the worker you can see that we have an endpoint that's created which allows us to go ahead and transfer information from the scale out master to the worker and if you already have the certificate of the master so you can see here configure the, configure the SSL certificate of the master node to trust if you've already got one then you might as well just go ahead select here browse select the certificate and the rest of this stuff happens automatically but in the real world very often that's not what happens so I'm going to show you how we would do it otherwise and uh, when you press next uh, that's basically it I've already got everything set up on another environment so I'm not going to do it over here but essentially this is the configuration that you want to do when you do the installation uh, once the installation is complete the next step is to get into the underlying nodes and uh, as you can see I've actually set this up in an always on availability group <coughs> so uh, you don't need to do that here again this is just something that I've already got set up so I'm just reusing that and uh, what you'll see here is if you open up the certificate manager you'll see that uh, inside of personal under certificates you'll have a certificate created for the SSI's worker service and similarly uh, for the master as well you'll have uh, the SSI's uh, s worker service certificate created so all you really need to do at this point is to go ahead and copy these certificates across to the other machine so we'll talk about that in a minute so if you look over here you can see that I've got a worker service, uh, service um, certificate available here as well and what you need to do is uh, you'll go ahead right click go to tasks and you can see export you'll ch choose export press next and you'll say do not export the private key press next you can leave the rest of it at defaults press next choose a file name I'm gonna save this somewhere on my uh, desktop so you can see I've already got SQL Server Worker 1, SQL Worker 2, so I'll just call this guy SQL Worker, SQL 3, yeah, and uh, I'll just save it, and press next. <coughs> when you do this, uh, what you're basically doing is, as you can see, we've got uh, the certificate exported, and uh, you will do this for uh, the other environment as well. So in my case, you can see that I've actually copied this file into a folder called Quorum, just so that I can have it accessible across both nodes and uh, with this what we do basically is once you have this exported you need to import it onto the other node as well so uh, you would basically just come into your SQL Server uh, uh, installation and look into the uh, certificates and inside certificates you'll say right click import and then import the, uh, the certificate of the other machine 
and when you do that basically what happens is uh, <coughs> you've got your setup configured so that you can start moving data around between the client and the server so essentially what you want to do is if you think about it in a, a more visualized way it is creating a certificate here and transferring it here creating a certificate here and transferring it here so that they can talk to each other when you do this uh, what happens is uh, it establishes kind of like a secure connection or it gives the endpoint a way to securely transfer information from the master node to the worker and that's basically what we want to do so a couple of prerequisites like I mentioned is create and deploy the certificates open the firewall ports and enable SQL authentication where you use DFTs and the reason for this is because when you create these scale out deployments you can't really rely on Windows authentication to do the authentication for the connection strings in the package it may not be deployed in the uh, in a machine that has that account or has the permissions so as a best practice in order for you to make sure that your packages still continue to run successfully you will prefer to go ahead and um, make sure that you use SQL authentication within your SSI packages if you know that the package is going to be used in scale out deployment so now that we have that basically the setup will be completed and uh, the machines will be able to recognize each other so go ahead export this and import it into the other machine and vice versa once you've done this much the next step is to actually configure scale out so as you know you will already have a uh, integration services catalog and here's your catalog you will right click your catalog and you will go to manage scale out naturally this is done on the master node so in your master node you'll see that we've got the endpoint for the master node we've got the IP address of the master node we got the last online time and uh, when you want to install workers what you're basically doing is <coughs> I'll just go ahead and delete these guys and add them again just so that uh, you can see exactly the process of adding workers so the first thing is uh, this is the master so I need to identify that my master in this case is SQL 1 so I will add SQL 2 as a worker so I'll come over here and I'll type in SQL 2 and I'll click validate and when I do that basically as you can see here there are a couple of steps that need to be performed such as restarting the service creating an endpoint or updating the endpoint and uh, using the uh, public certificate to uh, do the verification things like that so basically at this point all you need to do is confirm and say that yeah I'd like all these actions to be performed and you press OK and uh, it's gonna take a couple of seconds and all of these steps that's mentioned over here is gonna happen and uh, once it's done it'll basically give you a message saying that yeah it's good to go and you can close this window at which point you will basically have uh, this SQL 2 node as a worker configured on SQL 1 master so uh, just give it a second while that's happening and you can see here that once it's done successfully you get an option that says close and if I refresh it you'll see that I've got SQL 2 but its current status is disabled so I'm gonna right click it and enable it and again if I refresh it you'll see that now it's online similarly I've also got SQL worker service uh, integration services scale out deployment worker service installed on SQL 1 as well so there's no rule saying that the packages has to be executed on an external machine it can execute on the same machine as well and so I'll go ahead and press validate and again press OK to confirm and just give it a minute Uh, as you can see here we're good to go here so if I refresh it you'll see I've got one that's disabled and one that's enabled so I'll just go ahead and enable both of them and uh, once I do that you can see that uh, I've got two workers they're both online everything seems good to go 
so once this is done the rest of the process is pretty much uh, straightforward all you need to do is go into your integration services catalog right click open up your packages and right click the package and you can say execute and scale out when you do that as before you've got package configuration parameters we don't need to worry about them they remain the same as always but you'll see that we've got another option here that says mach machine selection and you can see that by default it says allow any machine to execute the package so in this case you don't really control which machine is executing the package however if you do decide that you want a particular machine to use uh, the, uh, to have the package executed on then you'll go ahead and choose that machine name for example in my case you'll see that SQL 1 is where the package is deployed but I want it executed on SQL 2 over here so I'll go ahead and select SQL 2 and I'll press OK and uh, naturally with uh, catalog database packages when you execute them you get a report so I'll just need to wait and see if this uh, package completes successfully and uh, just give it a second and you'll see that the package completed successfully in 11 seconds and it ran on the machine SQL 2 you'll also notice that I have SQL 1 so I can still go ahead and tell it to execute the package on machine 1 as well and the idea being that you get to pick and choose on which machine you want the package to execute and that allows you to flexibly decide how much memory and CPU the underlying hardware uh, has available and how much of it you want to be able to use for your package execution and that's really all there is it uh, all there is to uh, setting up and implementing scale out deployment packages in uh, SSIS I hope this video has been informative and uh, thank you for watching